Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh to some of you and peace out to the rest of you. Again, you know who it is and who it ain't. It ain't your boy, it is your man, the blackest hearted, blackest minded, blackest man on social media, signing black in and shining again, asking you to hit the share button because the message is more important than the messenger. So listen closely, y'all. Unfortunately, um, for many of us, uh, we have been given a lot of rhetoric over the years. And this rhetoric um, has been believable in light of how we've been treated in the United States uh, and even at times back home on the continent by not only white folks, but by everybody that ain't us and on a few occasions by some who are us i.e. the way that black Dominicans will treat a black Haitian. And this rhetoric has led us to believe that something that is a solution that I've talk, told us is a solution is actually another facet of the same problem. This is why I addressed the conversation between Phil Scott and Tiffany Banner in my last upload. I recorded that Thursday, I was able to upload it Sunday. That's how busy I was last weekend. And by the way, Sand Lion, I have not forgotten about you. Just terribly tied up. Um, I have a very bad class this quarter. Second quarter in a row that I've had one of the dumbest classes um, on the male's campus at this university. That being said, uh, we've been fed rhetoric. The first people to speak this rhetoric, I don't know who they are, but the first ones to speak it weren't so sure about what they were saying. The second ones to speak it um, believed it. Every, everyone thereafter, for the most part, believed it. I'm going to say to you as listeners that you can get what Sand Lion, he calls himself Sand Dog. I can't fix my mouth to call him a dog though, but uh, he was a guest on Green Gorilla's channel and uh, Kendra D came in and called in out as well. He explained the parallels between pre-Islamic Arab society and modern day black America. And it ain't just black America either, but that's the example that's on display for the world. And I'm gonna tell y'all, both of them said neither one was going to be on there to tell you, you got to be Muslim. I'm not here to tell you that any of us could force you. A forced conversion is not a conversion. It's the same thing as, uh, well, I mean, you are familiar with this in Christianity. Free will means that it is free. So you must choose for yourself, but there is a consequence when you don't choose that which is correct, especially when the option was laid out before you. And I want to say to you, I'm not here to force you. I'm here to tell you that the information itself will force you, but it takes some research. It's going to take some looking into. But one of the examples, and I told you I would give you examples to be fair, periodically. One of the examples is that we've got our own political system. Now this is universal in this political system. Um, it is not specified that black folks must be on top. It is not specified that we'll be on the bottom. No one is specified, per se, by ethnicity to be on top. But what I will say is that in any jurisdiction that we have, we're going to have to be the ones, of course, on top. But the other thing, too, to understand is that we don't have to worry. When we have an Islamic political jurisdiction somewhere, we don't have to worry about Democrat and Republican. Because everything is not up for a vote anyway. And power is not to be placed into the hands of those who seek it. So what we're dealing with is a very flawed political system from the very beginning. It's already there with its flaws. You can't be president or senator or congressman or mayor 
or a city councilman or a state representative or a state senator or a governor without seeking the office first. That means you gotta want some power. The bar is held pretty high. You can't seek power in our political system to get it. Now what does that tell you? You gotta be selected by a council and they gotta come to you and inform you that you've been selected for a political office, some sort of political power, or that the one really to run uh, the affairs of the Muslims in general, or the one that was selected then appoints you and you are now in a political office. That's how you, that's how you are in charge in an Islamic political jurisdiction. So right off the bat, the one that is power hungry, no. It's not even an application process by which you would seek it. Now, if they pick you, you could probably turn it down. You could resign and step down, but you can't just go into positions of power. It doesn't work that way. And even then, even with this standard, there is a warning to the scholars against seeking the approval or the coziness with those in positions of power because the scholars are going to have to at some point check some people in positions of political power. I just wanted to explain to you one more example of why it is that this actually is a solution for us because let's be honest, we got folks that want power just like any other race of people and it corrupts and there aren't even prescribed penalties for when you start stealing from the masses like this. In ours, there is. You steal from the masses, that's certainly going to be the, beyond the minimum amount uh, required to amputate a hand. Now how you much you gonna enjoy it? Stop and think about that. That's just one example. That's because this solution I've told you about is not even just one solution, it is multiple solutions. So no, Sandline was not here to tell you you gotta accept it. We don't force that. You must accept it for yourself, but it is the right choice to make. But I'm here to tell you that it is the right choice to make that other choices in terms of what you will believe are not going to help, rather in this life nor in the next. They're just not going to. Choosing to believe something else may mean that you get to drink with less guilt. Maybe you get to toot or smoke with less guilt, but it doesn't mean anything better than that. I also want to remind you if possible, people. At some point, um, at some point, we're going to have to apply the solution um, in order for couples to form. Because remember, you may think, well, you know, I mean, we're not even going to be in existence after a while, the way things are going, and we're probably not. I don't think we will. I mean, our blood, our DNA codes will survive diluted amongst other people, but if you're really worried about uh, the genetic integrity and lasting purity of, uh, of tropical Africans amongst us in the West, if you're really worried about it, you're not going to have that if we cannot fix the mechanisms of couple formation amongst us. And you can't do that without Islam. That's not going to happen. That's part of why it is that Kendra D and Asada Muhammad are the ones that actually um, are, are on our side in this thing. They're not the only ones. And Asada, Asada Muhammad is not making content per se, but she's uh, in the comments telling brothers, look, I'm not the enemy, and there are those of us that, that do cherish you and respect you and love you and want, uh, want family lives with you and good sibling relationships with you for those that are siblings. And th this does exist, and they're the main ones because they understand they were not created to hate men, nor were men created to hate them. Neither one was created to oppress the other, but unfortunately we are engaged in a war that we men did not choose and therefore we must fight back.
So if you want to know what will, in fact, fix any of these things, that's great. But I'm going to tell you as well that even what we're talking about in this space, couple formation, couple maintenance, family formation, is not going to be fixed by anything else. It never was. Because what else is going to actually address how it is that each gender gets rights and responsibilities that's already outlined, it's already laid out. I'm not saying you don't have um, some sisters even wearing niqab, walking around talking about feminism and women's rights but never men's rights. And only, only talking about women's rights and only talking about men's responsibilities and never either one or the other. You do have this. But just like you've got the Arabs that got that butt whipped by East African sisters from the horn, because what they did was un-Islamic, meaning what those men did to that boy was un-Islamic. Just like you've got that because somebody was not doing what they were supposed to be doing, you do have some sisters with hijabs on and niqabs as well, or without any of that stuff on prancing around as if they're somehow super smart and enlightened and they know things that the prophets did not know about what's been going on for 150 million years, which is even older than human beings, which is coupled formation and reproduction and rearing. As if they just discovered something new that God never thought of and never revealed to mankind before because it is un-Islamic. That's what's going on. I think I've said enough. Thank you for listening. The next time in my next recording, I'm going to talk about um, <clears throat> about something that Ibn Taymiyyah said. And it was actually in the context of marriage. And uh, I'm gonna drop a bombshell for many brothers it's going to be for the Muslims, but non-Muslims are welcome to listen. But I'm going to put a bombshell in there for the brothers. Something that's easy to look up, but it's just not known to many of us. Thank you for listening. Black heart, black mind, black out. Aslam alaikum. And black heterosexual, non-select male power. And black patriarchy. Until extinction or judgment day just because they don't like it.